behalf of the Ministry of Defense and Kenya Defense Forces. And as a person who worked very closely with General Ogola as a Vice Chief of Defense Forces and as the Chief of Defense Forces, personally, I have lost a brother. I have lost a colleague. I have lost a member of the Defense Council. I have lost a general who has put the security, the sovereignty, and territorial integrity of our country. His family will confess, Your Excellency, that even Christmas and New Year, General Gola could sacrifice and tell me troops in deep operations, those outside the country, we were in Kismayu, we were in deep hostile areas. He was a man who was committed to his work. He was a man because the office of the minister and the vice chief of defense forces are the closest officers, Your Excellency. I work with all the vice chief of defense forces and the chief of defense forces. He was a man of discipline and honor. I don't want to say more because you have interacted with me, with him too. So, Your Excellency, the rank and the leadership of Kenya Defense Forces, we have a lot to learn from General Ogola, our general. The way we will learn and have learned more, Chief of Defense Forces, we want to assure you that we will leave the legacy and the dreams of General Ogola for the safety of our nation, be it in the air, land, and the sea. But Your Excellency, as our Commander-in-Chief, if you allow me, the former Prime Minister yesterday said a statement. And I want to qualify that statement. Because General Ogola was very close to me, particularly when he was the Vice Chief of Defense Forces. And when the whole issue of bombers, 15th of August, was hanging over his head, he, ha he even told me, and the family can agree with me, we had conducive st uh, discussion, that even he has lost weight, that this thing was disturbing him. And Your Excellency, General Ogola was not, as the Vice Chief of Defense Forces, was not a member of the National Security Committee, which is chaired by the Head of Public Service. So how did General Ogola went to ANSAC and to BOMAS? And as a Muslim, General Ogola shared with me text messages of his superiors and members of the National Security Committee then. And he asked three, four times. First, in the morning when he was going to ANSAC, he showed me the message that he was given, go represent me at ANSAC because of a prior other commitment of the person who was supposed to go. When he went to ANSAC, General Ogola and a direction was given to him with other colleagues, with a leader, him as a member, to go to BOMAS. General Ogola, as a respectable soldier and general, he asked and sent a text message to his bosses and asked, what am I going to do in BOMAS? And this has happened. And General Ogola was told, it's been decided, you go. And I'm narrating what General Ogola today is lying here, this man, told me. When he went to BOMAS, the then chairman of IBC, so he told me, kept them for five hours. And the 411 came 
while he was in Bomas, saying the results will be announced at three. And General Ogola then again sent a text message and saying now that the result will be announced at three, as a general, as a soldier, what am I doing here? And he was told, stay with your colleague. That text message is there. When His Excellency, when His Excellency yesterday said, I had a one-to-one -one with the General Ogola, he gave me permission to have one-on-one -on -one discussion with the General Ogola on a Monday from 7 to 9.30 p.m. in my house. His security, his drivers can confirm and when he convinced me, because he was a man of God, when he convinced me is when he got an opportunity to relay and talk to the president with those three statements at the end of his discussion with the president. Today, I want to confirm that because of what happened in, to General Ogola, the president as the chairman of the National Security Council. So that, it will, so that for it not to happen again, the president has directed last year that members of the National Security Committee, the IG, the DG NIS, the head of public service, PS Interior, PS Defense, CDF, PS Foreign Affairs, PS Treasury, and the Solicitor General can never again delegate the attendance of that membership to their juniors. Because tomorrow, another member of the National Security Committee will commit the same crime. So Honorable Raila Odinga was very right, very right. And I came today to qualify his statement that General Ogola, a man he knows, will not have gone to Bomas. And the people who sent him to Bomas, some of them are here. Some of the people who sent him to Bomas, some of the people who sent him to Bomas, are known. They are members. So sometimes the way Joel said, let us not create a false narrative about General Ogola. Your Excellency, allow me again to make another confession as your Minister for Defense. Many of my colleagues ask me, you used to be a vibrant politician, you have changed. I have changed because I went to a different environment. Your Excellency, when General Tonje introduced that gentleman's agreement, there was General Opande, who he recommended to be the next CDF. But he did not, he was not given that chance. Many, many, the law says that a CDF will serve for four years or at the attainment of 62 years, whichever comes first. Your Excellency, this region, this region has produced decorated generals. General Owiti, General Opande, and many, many others. But because you wanted to change Kenya, you said we must kill ethnicity and regionalism in our country, Your Excellency, and I want to confirm to the nation. There were many people within even our ranks who said General Ogola should not be appointed. But they had only one reason. Very unfortunate, very unfortunate, the reason of 15th of August. 
They forgot all the other credentials of General Ogola. Your, Your Excellency, you have confirmed to the nation you are not a petty leader. You are not a vengeful leader. You are not a person who will follow what happened, Your Excellency. As your Minister for Defense, you made a deliberate, with the finality, based on the credentials. He was a smart general. He was one of our finest jet F-15 jet fighter. He has trained everybody here, including the current Air Force commander. He was a man of humility. He could walk to my office and to all the offices. I could walk to his office. Your Excellency, one day he came to me and asked me in the holy month of Ramadan, Minister, can I fast with you for seven days? Your Excellency, you decided, you directed, and I went and passed the council, the defense council, your decision on the 27th of April, 2023, the appointment of General Ogola, among others. And on 28, you saw him as your next CDF. He died, you saw him on 28th of April, 2023, he died on the 18th of April, 2024, 10 days before he made to one year. He had good plans, Your Excellency, for the 15th of May this year of our graduation. And he told you the reforms he will introduce, and you will see it, because our team is here. Your Excellency, you'll go into the annals of history as a person who appointed not only General Ogola, not only Raimondo Molo, not only many, many Kenyans to key security positions, including myself, without regard to ethnicity, to the region they come from, and to how their communities voted in last election. Your Excellency, you will be the one that will make sure that Kenya will be a country that everybody and every community will be proud of. With those many remarks, Your Excellency, let me take this opportunity Your Excellency, Managing coalitions, as you know, it's never easy. I need to tell you that I spoke on behalf of Mwangi Wairia, the party leaders of Usawa, and Mwishmua Wajakoya of Roots Party. Thank you. I forgot to mention the governor as well. I will. I will. I will. Governors who are present here, I saw Governor Otoma. You are being recognized. We recognize you. We value you. All our senators.